Hey guys, it's Michael Todd, and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. We're back. We're back at Zeke's Antiques, you guys. I love it here. It's an amazing place. There's a lot to see. I'm going to keep the introduction short. We're going to get inside, see if we can't find anything. I have found some amazing ephemera here before, and I've actually found some antique Austrian uh, ceramics. So I'm excited to see what we find today. Let's get inside, guys. Alrighty, here is your exterior. We do have some pods out here you can go through. I feel like this is a new one, at least to me it's new. Look at that painted saw blade. It's getting creepy. Ooh, look at the blow molds. I like that sand. Oh, he's got his glasses still. Can you see him? His little stogie. All right, guys, let's get inside. Alrighty, guys. First off of the bat, I am seeing these cute little dolls over here. This guy is interesting. He's obviously a cloth doll. It kind of appears to be a little jack in the box. Thought that was really interesting. We've got a collection of the old cap guns and some padlocks here with keys, might I add. Now at the front of the store, you're really going to take notice that a lot of the items are very small. They're in the cabinets and that's okay. Look at that beautiful shot of this store. Isn't it great? Like I said, there's just a great vibe about Zeke's. There's a little bit of something here for everybody, you guys. Definitely rusty, crusty, and dusty, and we love it. Kind of giving you an overall shot in case it is your first time here. And as I did mention, we do have a lot of the smalls here. Beautiful English porcelain brooch. Fortunately, there was some damage there to that front pedal, so I am going to have to leave that one behind. And you're seeing some jewelry peeking out underneath the items on the top here. Even some militia items, really liking that. Just want to take my time, make sure we don't miss anything, including these teeth. <laughs> Here's some kid-sized cigarettes. Uh, no, those were like, those were candy kids' cigarettes, uh, you know, back when it was fun. I don't. No, I do think that they do still make those, but that's definitely an earlier pack than I think the um, candy cigarettes most of us are used to. But I definitely had to get it on camera. Alrighty, and again, a lot of the tinies, you guys, I have really been digging the tinies lately, and I see someone back there waving at me, so we're going to get him out and... There he is. Now, I do think he is part of a larger piece, but I think he is a great figural piece. Um, so I do pick him up. I think he's really darling. I've been on a circus kick lately. Loving these little bank savers here. So, of course, you'd give these to little kids and they would put their change in there when added up for them. Great graphics. I was kind of tempted, but... Uh, they're right there by their register, so. Now, speaking of right by, and I spot this. It's this bag of interesting, to pull them out, Joan of Arc. These little wooden figurines. Let's inspect the bag. So, it's a bag full of these saints. I think that's really interesting. I'm going to dig in here a little bit more, and then I pull out, of course, St. Michael, so that is sold. You guys, I want to take a closer look at these. Let's do that. All right, guys, we are actually back at my house, and I am filming this separately. Um, these are the items that are pulled out. They are called the Alley Workshops Oxford. Now, once upon a time in the 1900s, the early 1900s, um, there was kind of very much this Diagon Alley, this secret little alleyway of artisans, small craftsmen uh, in Oxford, England. And you had to get there by going through a business's door. So it wasn't necessarily just open aired alley. It was very closed in. And the artisans that would work there would sign their pieces, Alley Workshop Oxford. These are all hand painted 
Here, of course, we have a nativity scene. I am going to show you the saints here. Now, again, the nativity is missing their little wooden bases, uh, but it appears that we do have several types. We do have these thicker cardboard blocks, not cardboard, wood blocks, and then the flat ones here, but all of them are the alley workshops. You guys, these things are exceptionally hard to find, very difficult, and let me tell you what, highly valuable. Um, this is just one of those items where you feel a sort of honor in being able to have found them. Um, now it's really going to be about, look at the detail on that. Now it's going to be about making sure that I'm able to get them, you know, to the right home. Um, there is, like I said, there's some exceptional, exceptional value on these guys. I think there's a Canterbury tail set that's up for, I think about 2000. There is six pieces of Alice in Wonderland that's at 555. Those are the only listings of these figurines. And we have a whole bag. Had to show you those in more detail. Let's get back to the store. All right, guys, picking up where we left off. Oh, like I said, I have been on a circus kick and I don't know what it is, but all of the circus stuff is wanting to pop out at me. Now, this is a little bit more of a contemporary uh, circus poster, though the graphics are absolutely wonderful on it. I kind of regret not getting that. Um, that's a bit of a disappointment. Jeez, Michael. <laughs> Uh, we got a few more here. The graphics, the, I do like the elephants. Uh, see, Ticketmaster. And I was like, oh, that's definitely contemporary. And I will spot here and point it out to you in just a second that it does, in fact, say Ticketmaster in smaller print at the top there. You can kind of see it. Yeah, Ticketmaster outlet. So we're going to leave those behind. Isn't that a great shot? Great vibe. Love it. Now, we are rounding the corner here to the other side of the cash register, and we've got some old tin toys here that we're going to check out. And of course, there's some eyeglasses, loving the little duckies here, the wind-ups, of course, the Christmas. Those are amazing. Just want to kind of check it all out. Look at the hippo bank. That's absolutely adorable. And then look, I'm seeing more circus. You guys, it's been a while, but I actually spotted a complete uh, Mark's Toys uh, tin super circus. Those are two pieces there you see in the back and here off to the side behind the tank. Um, those are their sideshow acts. Still very valuable and collectible. Oh, look. <laughs> This circus stuff is definitely jumping out at me, and that is a graphic of all graphics. That clown is a little creepy. Like, he's definitely ready to get you. He's saying, welcome to the circus, boys and girls. <laughs> and that is Nescapec PA. These are sad clowns back here. I like the creepy clown the best. <laughs> I did leave it behind. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh boy. Of course, we have some of the old little arcade games here. Great graphics. They make for a wonderful display. A little large for me to ship, so I do leave those behind. I can't believe I left that circus poster behind. There's something wrong with me. We got a box full of clocks here in case you're late. It's all this one. Oh, it's a little Donald the Duck. It's okay. I'm not overly excited. This one, though. Ooh, look at that. Those mid-century lines to it. Now, I do plug it in. It does, in fact, work, and it even lights up. I think this is pretty cool. I don't know a whole lot about clocks, to be truthful. Um, so I do decide to leave that one behind, though I had a good feeling about it. To be honest, I probably could have bought that one. Um not going to say that I regret leaving it behind, but I think we'll live until somebody out there is screaming at the screen. Why didn't you get that? <laughs> Great little art deco chandelier here. Love the lines on it. I think that's fantastic. I told you Zeke's had some amazing ephemera and let's start it off with these New Yorker Stotts. 
Bert, I'm not going to butcher it. It is a German World War I uh, newspaper. It was produced, of course, for the German population in the United States. Um, it has various pictures throughout the war specific to the German army. I do pick these up. They're absolutely amazing. They're in exceptional condition, especially for their age. Here is some more advertisements. Uh, this Mavis face powder. Um, they were a cosmetics company, very popular in the 20s. They often did these very like enchanted um, advertisements. We've got Wrigley's gum from October 1928 in really good condition. This piece is, of course, as is Mavis, are already on their way to their new owners who are going to love them, undoubtedly. Great for your Halloween display. And these are also, actually, they're in possession of their new owner. This is J.C. Joseph Christopher Leyendecker, a German artist, um, very popular and predated Norman Rockwell uh, in regards to the Saturday Evening Post. Um, I, there is something that is extraordinary about this artwork. I am elated to be able to have these, especially our Scottishmen here. Um, but Leyendecker did a number of advertisements for interwoven uh, menswear socks specifically and you guys I actually want to show you a close-up of them we are back at the house you guys and I have in fact framed them they are in antique frames I think that the frames that I chose to go with these fit each of the pieces very well um, these again are in good condition of course they are showing signs of age I'm not mad at it um, I think that they're beautiful. I love the graphicness of these illustrations. Keeping in mind, these are from the early 1900s, so I, I don't know. Very modern style to it. We're going to take a closer look at our Scotman here. Look at that. Doesn't that isn't that frame perfect? Now I did get the frames at Zeke's. I did not capture that on camera, but I think again this frame fits this perfectly. I am somebody that does like a little character, some flaws to the frames. I think that it does add to the aesthetic value, um, especially of the artwork inside. Don't they look brand new? Oh, I love these. They're beautiful. All right, back to the store. <laughs> And now we have this Burritt's Atlas. This is the geography of the heavens. You guys are going to melt. Um, now, it is in very rough condition. Most of the pages are separated. It has a copyright date of 1855. Um, it is a large piece of ephemera. I'm having a... Yeah, see, it's... It's completely separated, uh, though I will say that two of the plates are still fully intact, um, and you'll see that here in just a second. Now, this piece is also off to its new home. Um, I know it's going to be loved and appreciated, but here we have got all of the constellations throughout the course of the year. They are beautifully illustrated, of course, with the stars. There's Cancer the Crab. That's right. But again, guys, throughout the atlas here, you are seeing these stunning, stunning graphics. I mean, it's a piece of history, um, and I think that it very much serves as a time capsule for a point in time and the things or the realities in which they were working in regards to our universe. Um, again, here is one of the larger plates. Now, these are still intact. Um, so far as they're not separated from one another, but we are seeing, of course, the rotation of the planets, the uh, Earth around the sun, the moon's orbit here, at least in theory. Um, I think that is exceptional. Again, it's a historical piece, and I know that it's in a loving home now. Alrighty, guys, that is it for the downstairs. We're going to go ahead we're going to head up. Oh, do you see that coconut? I never noticed that before. <laughs> the eyes in the night. If you didn't see it, you're going to have to rewind. Um, I never saw that before. <laughs> okay, guys, we are upstairs here on the second floor. Again, you just never know what you're going to find in here. 
we're going to check it out here a little bit closer. We do have some cobalt and some depression era glass. Um, there are some frames I actually went digging through there. Um, thankfully, Kelly, one of the co-owners, was able to pull some off of the wall for me, and I did purchase those. I ended up selling uh, the prints that were in there, so that was that was cool to be able to do. Got some beautiful sat pink satin glass here with a little uh, purple hand painted pansy. I was gonna snatch it up, but there is some damage there to to the piece, so I am gonna leave that one behind. But that would have been a steal at four dollars. Let me tell you what. Loving the lamps that we're seeing back there. Ooh, that's a cool frame. I didn't notice that one. Well, that's a little too small. <laughs> we have moved on to a second part. Um, a lot of this stuff over on the second floor, specifically to the right as you enter, is going to be more dedicated to the kitchen. Uh, but you always want to check it out. You never know what has kind of snuck its way in there. Um, or, you, you, I mean, shoot, I've done very well with a lot of the cutlery, specifically like that mid-century or the Bakelite handles um, have done very well for me in the past. So I always do keep my eye out for those. Look at that rye flower sack there. That actually is pretty cool. That would be neat if you kind of framed that kind of like a man cave or even in the kitchen. That would go very well, I think. And we're going to cut over here to the second room. Um, you're going to see a lot of crocs, mixing bowls, larger pieces in here. The old nut bowl. Who did not have one of these growing up with all of the utensils, the cracker? And then, of course, you had your like little tools to get your nuts out. Oh my goodness, that just screams Christmas time to me. I don't think anybody really ever does that anymore. Do you remember that? You could go to the grocery store and buy like bags of mixed nuts. Like, do they even still do that? I don't even know that they do. Everybody's like, no, I don't want to work for it. Just give me in a can. It's a shame. It's a shame, folks. A few salt and pepper shakers there, but didn't really see anything that, that captured my imagination. A lot of meat grinders. Don't know what's going on there, Zeke. I might be a little worried now. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We're about to exit out of this room. And as I do, boom. This is actually facing us. It is this Woody Woodpecker animation cell. Goodness. I thought that that was pretty cool. It is, of course, signed there uh, in red ink on the brown. So it is a little bit more difficult to see. But it is present. Alrighty, we have now moved on into the toy room. I love looking at the vintage and antiques. Um, there is something to be said for the toys. I think especially given a certain era, there is such a whimsy and sometimes a, a bit of a crudeness um, in regards to it not being like overly refined. So uh, it almost has like a craftsman or a folk art feel to that. Um, even mass produced toys. Um, I think that, that is so charming. Uh, and I love, again, just looking at those pieces. Got a little bit of everything here. We even have a framed ballerina there. I mean, because why not? Darn it. On the opposite side here, we've got some doll houses. Little Mickey and Minnie. They look to be a little contemporary. Loving the little model tool chest there. For the little handyman in your life. Got a little rubber face monkey i don't think that is zip from rushton i think it was it's a different uh toy company i love the wooden ones with kind of like the applied um decals to those those are super cute those campbell babies there those are composition um a little out of my price range now i did see this one it was ludo i mean look at the graphic on there and then i saw retro range and i was like ah Reproduction. Oh, yep, there's a barcode, but I still want to check it out. Look at those graphics. And the game board's a little disappointing, not going to lie. <laughs> Back you go, reproduction. Oh, but do you spot that? Yeah, that's right. We got a little mint, mint green chenille baby blanket with a yellow giraffe and a pink leash. Of course, we're going to get this. It's in really good condition. Uh, there's no pinholes. There's no stains or tears. So, yeah, we're going to scoop that one up for sure. 
And we're right back to where we were. You can see the chenille is now missing. I'm going to check it out here. Don't really think that I'm missing a whole lot. This Mary Go Zoo is very like little people knockoff. Um, probably some toy company wanted to try to capture the magic and I don't think it happened. This little guy is absolutely adorable. Look at the condition of him. Yeah, and he is priced based on that condition. I mean, that that application, that sticker there. Oh my gosh, look at the horse. <laughs> Not only has he seen a thing or two, he wants to tell you a thing or two. Um, but again, that's exactly what I'm talking about. There is such a sense of character and whimsy and charm to that piece. Oh my gosh. Alrighty, guys. Now, as we come out here to the like sun deck, I guess, obviously it is enclosed past the toy room. We are into Christmas land. We've got a whole bunch of the smaller like tabletop uh, Empire Mold Santas, two Frosties back there. Those were cute. Um, they are priced for collectors, which is like the going rate of like 30 to $35 on those, which isn't really that bad. I mean, you'd think they would be more, but I think that the smaller, the, the tabletop are a little bit more common. Now, we did find these Noma, two bubble lights, new in their original packaging. I was really debating it, I'm not going to lie, but every time I have gotten bubble lights, they do not work. <laughs> I was like, you're not, I just, I was not in the mood to be disappointed in my bubble lights again, so I did leave them there. But we do see some baggies of ornaments. I kind of did like the, the glitter ones there. A little Victorian era here. There was some thumbprints. Those are cute. I always like checking out the ornaments. Because you know, I actually own an aluminum tree now. These are fun. I like the multicolors. It's 35 for the entire bag, which is not unheard of. Now, these were highly unusual. There are these tiny little hand-blown uh, opalescent flowers. We have green and clear. Um, yeah, I'm going to get them wrapped in wire. And I found, like, the world's tiniest little bisque cupie. Um, he even has his little wings and a little mark. Yeah, we're going to get that. All right, guys, that was building one. We're about to head over here to building two. This is part of Zeke's Antiques. Remember, we got to look both ways. Okay, I think we're good. All right, I'll meet you inside. Oh my gosh, do you see that? How amazing would that be to get into your display? Obviously, I'm not going to be shipping that, but that thing was epic. What you I mean, seriously? And look at this is epic. This little like set T here. Whoa, that's a little imposing, isn't it though? that hand carved the arms on it and it is a little bench so we can pick it up and we have some storage underneath here obviously it's showing signs of its age but again i like that character Oof. it's got a great like asian flair to it i think all right we're gonna check out uh, oh, no, we're not because I was blocked. We're going to have to circle back here. Now, obviously, we're seeing a lot more of, of the larger pieces, furniture and lamps. Um, but there are some smalls that are still tucked away over here. And hey, like I said earlier, you just never know what you're going to find and you don't know until you look. So we're going to look. I was like, are you? Oh, yep. It's a little record player has seen a better day, but that's OK. You're probably about 90 years old. <laughs> you know? Like the little atomic wear glasses down there. Eh, I'm going to try and stay away from the bar wear. Um, I've had it in the past. I've had some really good pieces in the past. And some have sold well. But the vast majority have done just okay. Um, for me, I think there are sellers out there who probably specialize in kind of like barware or more utilitarian pieces. Now, this is a utilitarian piece that I think is still really cool. It has these tiny little nub and feet on them. This little bar tray. I love that. I love the colors. Very deco. Uh, but at 35, I'm going to leave that behind. I've seen this piece before. I always pick it up. There is condition issues. <sighs> I wish it was in a different color palette. I don't like how bright it is. No, I don't. Well, 
<laughs> okay, guys. Anyhow, moving along. We've got a little mandolin here. We're missing a string or two. Still plays. Look at that little inlay of the mother and pearl. I think that's pretty. It's got its original case, too. Yeah, we're peering around. Again, we are looking at much larger pieces here. Look at this old organ. Oh my goodness. Couldn't you just imagine that being played? The cotton, not the costumes, but the clothing that people were wearing when that was being played. I do like that tapestry backed chair there. I kind of miss that in real life. I will admit that's a bit disappointing. Mm, yeah, that's okay. It's pretty thin, very thin glass and not the kind of thin glass that, you know, was purposely made that way. Yeah, don't really see anything. We're going to head over here behind the register. Check out this antique cash register. Isn't that great? Alrighty guys, so checking out this stuff back here. You're gonna have to be careful, it's a little narrow. I don't feel like knocking anything off of the shelves. And then I do spot. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is oh mmm. Okay, so she's interesting. It's reading 1900s, early 1900s, late 1800s, though I do think it's more of a contemporary, more of like a 40s, 50s piece when they kind of harkened back. And then I see this little bird. Look at him, grumpy pants. <laughs> what are you so grumpy for? You're too cute to be grumpy. Ooh, three eyes. Yeah, I'd be saying, ooh, two. Jeez, sometimes I feel like two is more than enough. Oh, yeah. Look at that. The Lennox. These little jam jars. Aren't they cute? And they've got their little spoons. Now, these actually do pretty darn good online. Um, there wasn't a price on them. And quite frankly, I was a little freaked out about carrying this across the road. But look, it does have its original serving tray to it. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. I gotta say, Lennox did some really good pieces in the late, early, or late 80s, early 90s. Now I do spot these cards. These are going to be the last thing that I do find. There are these exceptionally weird like charade cards. So yeah, we got some interesting stuff. Show how your dad acts when he shaves with a dull razor. Like, okay. So yeah, we're going to pick these guys up and um, we're going to wrap it up outside guys. Here we go. Well, guys, I think that is going to do it for today's video. I know we didn't get a lot, but I think that there was some really cool things to see. I always love coming to Zeke's. It's got an amazing ambiance to it, and that is definitely worth the trip. As always, if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's free. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And you guys, everybody down in the comments, let me know what your favorite find of the day is. I'd appreciate it. And until next time, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.